So I was on my way home yesterday. And you'll excuse me, I'm huffing and puffing a little bit because we just got this thing upstairs. But <laughs> I found this bad boy sitting by a dumpster along with three other TVs. One was a DLP, one was one of the silver plastic crap magna boxes. And uh, the other one I think was a JVC and an RCA DLP garbage. I don't like DLP. So I picked it up and brought it home. This thing weighs 140 pounds. I like to kill myself getting it in the back of my truck. Good thing I did though, because today it poured. And uh, when I went back by this morning, all the TVs were gone that were sitting there. So either somebody who wanted them got them or a scrapper got them to scrap them out for metal. But uh, it works. Matter of fact, I, before I even brought it in the house, because it weighs so that much, why would I want to? bring it in if it didn't work so I did I left it out in the back of my truck <laughs> I ran an extension cord out to it turned it on sure enough fired right up got a good picture um, it's a 1998 so it's about 17 and a half years old I guess no let's see uh, 19 and a half years old ain't it 98 and the next year will be what 2018 so yeah so it's got some age on it but it still had a good picture Here's your model number, it's a KV32S45 from 1998 of October, so, yeah. So it's about almost 19 years old, I guess. Uh, all it's got is the basics. Got your RF that luckily hasn't been broke off. Video 1 is uh, S-Video or Composite. Video 2 is Composite. And then you have left and right analog out for audio. Um, it has picture in picture. But without the factory remote, I don't know if I can get to it. I have to see if I can find a universal that works. Even though I have a ton of um, Sony remote controls. But yeah, amazingly it worked. I just tossed them out because they didn't want them no more. Somebody in the apartment complex down the street moved out and left them which I don't blame them <laughs> 150 pound TV so what I plan to do with it before I hook it up to the uh, retro stuff here is I'm gonna pull the back off of it and uh, take a look at the capacitors and maybe uh, tune the G2 and the focus a little bit but I had a super Nintendo on it downstairs last night and it looked excellent so this will be the replacement to my uh, KV30HS420 HD CRT that crapped out on me. So that TV was just, it was a great TV. I loved it, could do uh, you know, all the different video inputs, HDMI and all that, but in the end, I think for retro gaming, nothing beats a regular, just straight up big 4x3 CRT. And this is a 32. I think they made this up at like 38. I can't even imagine a 38. I'm telling them what that way. Alright, so I'm going to pull the back off over here and plug it in, turn it on, let it warm up a little bit. About 30 minutes or so until it gets good and toasty. And uh, then I'll make my adjustments on it. And so here we are with the back off. CRT neck. Doesn't look too bad. It's not all black and burnt up looking in there or anything. It's dusty. Looks like all the purity rings are good. Now, well, either it got wet or somebody spilt something in it. You can see the residue on the back of the CRT here. But it didn't like it got to very far. There's the uh, CRT information for those of y'all interested. Tijuana, Mexico. Seventy oh. chin chin. Thirty kV. Woo. Yeah. That's why I don't play around with them too much when they're turned on or off for that matter. 30,000 volts. 
It's another uh, CRT sticker there, but covered up by the shield. That looks like an adjustment magnet there. Looks like another magnet there. And I think that's all I see magnet wise to adjust the picture. It's got a separate power supply. So that's your main board and you have your power supply board over here. Everything looks pretty good other than a layer of dust. All the capacitors appear to be okay. Nothing looks like it's all swelled up. No, with Sony, they probably put some decent caps in here. Tear. All I really want to do is tweak on these puppies here. The uh, screen and the uh, focus. Got a little age on it. It's time to adjust them a little bit. All right, I'm gonna plug it in, turn it on, let it warm up for a little bit. Got some pretty beefy little speakers in there. Eight ohms, five watts each. So that makes it what, 10 watts, I guess. Five watts a channel. I'm gonna blow some of this dust out of here. Maybe it'll help cool things a little better. All right, so a little focus adjustment. Um, Hopefully I don't get copyright flagged for a still image. Any of y'all recognize what movie this is from, uh, drop me a line in the comments. The car you should recognize. <laughs> Maybe if you're a car buff. But, uh, got the DVD player hooked up with S-Video. So I went in and did a little focus. It was a teeny bit out of focus, but it wasn't bad. Not even really much of a turn. So it's got real crisp text. And uh, the G2 control, or the screen control, really all you got to do with that, turn it up until you see retrace lines, which will be lines going down the screen. And then back it off a little bit at a time until you don't get any more retrace lines, and then you're pretty much set. So, so I blew all the dust out back here as much as I could. Got all that off the, off the jungle ices and everything. Help keep it cool. And how about almost 20 years worth of dirt laying on top of everything. But, uh, not bad for a uh, 19, almost 20 year old trunk trunk. Pretty crisp. The text is nice and crisp. That was the movie it was from, just in case, for spoilers. I've got the picture turned down, the uh, contrast set to about medium. Sure to get me a copyright strike. Should have put this on the tripod, but I was being lazy. So that's where I've got it set at now, which should have probably been in the factory. Got the treble turned up a little bit. I actually think these 90s Trinitrons were better made TVs than the 2000s Trinitrons. As you all know if you've been watching my videos and looking at the views on that uh, high def Trinitron that I had, the uh, quality just wasn't there. Great picture, but I mean it was made in 2005. I got it from the Goodwill. Now I mean it was somebody's, you know, everyday TV. So it had a lot of hours on it and all that, but still, you know, it just eventually failed. After about what, I think I had a year, year and a half before it finally failed. It failed not long after I made the review video on it that y'all like so much. So, but this will replace it as my new uh, TV for gaming. So uh, while well, it is, I'll come back at the end of this video and I'll throw a game on, let y'all see what it looks like with a game on it. Preferably something not Nintendo made, because, you know, they're... Uh, a holes to their fans on YouTube. All right, so here we are. It's the next day since I picked up that big 32-inch uh, Sony here. 
gave it a little bit of a focus adjustment on the flyback and uh, really nothing was needed on the screen control it's pretty much as good as it's ever going to get so Nintendo doesn't own Killer Instinct anymore maybe I won't get flagged for it but yeah I'm pretty happy with it it's, uh, it's October 98 model and it's, today is what October the 1st so it makes it 19 years old today Pretty damn good for a uh, CRT of that age. It's got really good speakers. Get in there and get a look at their scan line. I don't know if y'all can see it or not, but. So yeah, that's a pretty nice CRT, heavy CRT, 150 pounds, but uh, I think I've come around to the, I think I've come around to the uh, My Life and Gaming Guys way of thinking when it comes to CRTs. The HD CRTs are nice, but I think, especially if you want good scan lines and everything, I think going with an old school 4x3 like this one is the best way to go. Especially if you're playing any uh, Super Nintendo uh, stuff like that, N64 looks great on it. I mean, if I was uh, flush with cash, I would take one of my two N64s and put an Ultra HDMI mod on it or something like that. But can't be the Trinitron CRT. Can't think I here in the states. I can't think of anything better than the Trinitron CRT. So. Except for the uh, Sony PBM and BBMs, which are top of the line broadcast models, you know, monitors. So, so there you go. Nice little five finger discount. Uh, another good thing I like about these is uh, compared to the HD CRT, which I did, I had the back off of my HD. Y'all can look that video up if you want to, it's on my channel. You see how much more complicated they are, they have a lot of extra boards and stuff in them. This set here, it's got a power board, and you have the main board, and that's it. There's not a lot of complexity going on in here. And this thing's been around almost 20 years. I can guarantee you that won't last 20 years. I haven't had to service that one yet, but I did a video a while back on a VX42L that I had to service. And a VW42L I've had to service. I have a Sony Bravia. Uh, 32 inch 1080p 120 hertz LCD that I picked up. It was a 2010 model. I picked it up for 25 bucks at the Goodwill because it didn't work. It had a bad power supply board in it. Um, I have another 42 inch Vizio that the, the main board literally fell on. I think the EEPROM went bad. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've done the repair on it. But anyway, enough rambling on. Great five finger, uh, well, not, I wouldn't say five finger discount, but a uh, curbside discount. <laughs> Sitting by the dumpster. So, lucky, lucky to get it. Left the other two there, though, because they were, you know, crappy TVs. I only, get, I only pretty much pick up Trinitrons anymore. Alright, catch y'all in the next one.